says here the town in France where CERN is located is called uh, Saint Genus uh, Poly, po, uh, Poly, po, Poly, originally uh, Apollicum, named after the god Apollo, because the people who live there believe that it is a gateway to the underworld. It is interesting, they write in this article, it is interesting that CERN is built right there on that spot in announcing that they are trying to open a gateway. God locked the demons into the earth and man is trying to unlock the gate and release him. Uh, we are definitely living in a time of judgment. Um, so anyway, uh, let me read to you another uh, comment here that was stated. And this was stated by... Um, the man that actually is the, that is over this and um, uh, that is the director of this program. Let me see if I can find his comment here. I had it just a moment ago, but the director of this, um, his name is Rolf Hever, uh, and he'd given an inter interview to, to, um, uh, about CERN uh, to the British press, and he admitted that what they're trying to do with CERN is to open uh, a door to another dimension. Now, those of you that have actually followed CERN, you know that they have actually spoken about uh, uh, getting, uh, seeing apparitions as well, uh, that this has created one of the times that they actually put this thing into full motion, uh, that they were seeing apparitions. And that's alarming in itself. Uh, but I, I really wanted to share with you from a biblical standpoint, what are we, what are we looking at? What are we going to see um, that CERN may very well do? Because Satan, you have to remember, Satan's intention has always been to, des to destroy mankind from the face of the earth. Uh, since Adam and Eve were put here, he's, had a, he's been bent on destroying man. And somewhere along the way, uh, of course, God has bound him, and he is in a place where uh, he is not supposed to be able to get out, other than the fact that we go through the temptations, we go through the trials and errors, uh, the trials and, and things of that nature. But to, for him to be outright out there and doing like he did in the early days, uh, there is a binding that God has done with Satan. And um, not the bottomless pit, though. Let me just say that. He's not been cast into the bottomless pit as of yet. That happens... Uh, at, at, uh, during the millennial reign where he'll be thrown into the bottomless pit for a thousand years. But if we go to Revelation chapter 9, this is one of the places I wanted to take you to and just share with you um, a scripture that is very, very uh, interesting in regards to this, uh, this very event that we're seeing because uh, Satan could easily be uh, released by CERN. And uh, when we go to Revelation chapter 9, I want to take you to verse 14. Let me just start at verse 13. It says, And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, one saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. And the four angels who had been prepared for the hour and day and month and year were released so that they would kill a third of mankind. And the number of the armies of the horsemen was 200 million. I heard the number of them, and this is how I saw the vision and the horses and those who sat on them. The riders had breastplates, the color of fire, um, and hence it, and brimstone, and the heads of the horses are like the heads of lions, and out of their mouths proceed fire and smoke and brimstone. A third of mankind was killed by these three plagues and by the fire of the smoke of the brimstone, which proceeded out of their mouths. For the power of the horses in their, uh, is in their mouths and their tails, for their tails are like serpents and have heads, and with them they do harm. Now, that, that in itself is a terrifying event that is going to take place. And, and let me just share with you, um, you know, that when we look at this and we see that the scripture says that there were 
the four angels that were bound, and of course what comes with them is a humongous number of demonic forces. So, I, you know, the one thing that I could not help but to think about is that, you know, the only type of angels that have ever been bound are those angels that were cast out of heaven to start with. And uh, I want to get this real quick, though, from King James Version as well, because I know a lot of people look at this from that point of view. And let me just, let's go to that 914 again. Um, in the number, and that's verse 16 I want to read from King James. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousands, and I heard the number of them, and thus I, was, I saw the horses in the vision, and then that sat on them having breastplates of fire. I needed to read that from there because I knew it was worded a little different, uh, so it makes the number look different there. Uh, I think the multiplication process is what uh, the Hebrew uh, that they did here on this, because I actually have a Hebrew Bible that's in also the New Testament as well. Um, modern translation, though, that's not, that's not ancient there. But again, all these demons that are bound in the river of Euphrates are being released and sent out on mankind. Now, the question is, is what causes the release of these demons? And I have wondered, could it be a possibility that man ends up causing this problem upon himself? Could this be what CERN is all about? You know, Satan is determined to make sure that he can be released, but yet they have been bound for a season until it is time for that judgment to come out. But you might wonder, because isn't it interesting that they're bound in the river Euphrates? Isn't it interesting that when we speak about death for the, the child of God or for Christ, they cross the river of Jordan, even like David in, in the book of Samuel. David crosses the river of Jordan, right? And the, crossing the river of Jordan represents life. Elijah crosses the river of Jordan and he goes up in the chariot of fire. Everything that's dealing with the river of Jordan in this respect is like a, almost symbolic the, the river almost is like a symbolic meaning, but it crosses, say, per, uh, in the sim symbolism of it, it's like from one dimension to another. And I have thought about this, that these demons that are bound in the river of Euphrates also is the same thing. Now, you guys know we're, 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 we're the New Institute of Biblical Research, so we do search all types of ancient documents, even though they may not be biblical, uh, or part of the canon of our Bible, we do search documents. And I thought that there was one that in regards to this, uh, that I thought would be very interesting to share with you in light of the, re the respect of the angels being bound in this river. And this is actually from the, the apocryphal writing that is about Adam and Eve. And there's, there's just really one part I wanted to share with you. And, it, and, and because if there's any truth to this, this, again, shows that it is Satan and his demons that are bound in these rivers or that were in the river. And this here can be found in chapter, um, well, it's LXXII uh, uh, as far as the Latin numerals there. In the, I believe this is considered the first book of Adam and Eve, but it's in verse 14. It says, Then Adam and Eve got up and prayed to God while Satan and his host went down into the river in front of Adam and Eve so that they would see them going back into their own world. And I just thought that was fascinating. Now, it, it goes into this a little bit more often when you, if, you ever, if you've ever read the book of Adam and Eve, it speaks about this river that they come from on more than one occasion there. And I just thought that that was interesting because I, you know, remembering that, I, I've thought about CERN, and this has been on my mind now for quite some time, is, is CERN going to cause these demons uh, that are called angels, and of course, they're, you know, they, they appeared as an angel of light. Now, another interesting thing is, is they said that CERN, that, that they had apparitions that appeared before them. Now, I don't have this one here marked for you, but if you ever take the time, and I know many people have already read uh, different apocryphal books because of curiosity, uh, and, and I don't say that they're canonized. I can't say that they're 100% accurate, 
Uh, so I'm not endorsing it in that manner. I'm just wanting to share with you the, the, the interesting uh, similarities of what's about to transpire uh, and from our own Bible that we have in the book of Revelation, speaking of those four angels that are actually in uh, the river there. Okay, but even it was written there that Satan would appear in apparitions. And that's what I thought was interesting as well. So anyway, it's just an interesting thought there. And, uh, you know, like I said, that's uh, uh, just as a comparative note. Uh, I wanted to share that with you guys because there's a lot of uh, talk about what is going to happen when CERN is fired up again this September. And who knows? I mean, you're talking about, you know, scientists are, are messing around uh, with a world that, uh, that they have no business messing around with to begin with. And they're getting into, uh, uh, they're getting into a, a, a lot of issues there. So let me pause just for a second here. We, people are saying that we're having trouble with the sound here. Let me just look here. Your feet is repeating. It's like uh, people will say that they hear 100 voices at the same time. Oh, wow. That's crazy. So, our, our, I know that we're they, using... They said they didn't hear anything you said. That's okay. Well, I'll tell you what, guys. Listen, uh, you can catch this on YouTube. Okay, let me put a note in here. Um, if, you know, if we're having trouble... Uh, it will, it will be up on, on YouTube here in, in just a little bit here, okay? So um, I apologize for the, for the live stream feed that we're having, and, and I have no idea why that's actually taking place. But, uh, but anyway, I, did, I don't want to be too lengthy about this. I just wanted to kind of share this with you uh, because uh, a lot of things are coming up. And I, I really believe with all my heart we're, we're living in an hour we need to spend time in prayer. We need to seek God with all of our hearts. Uh, and we need to know without a shadow of a doubt that He is, he is in our life, that we, are, that we are one with Him. We don't need, um, we don't need all the, 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 to be caught up in all the things of the world. This, we're, we're too late of an hour for this. And another thing that is important, if you can, if you can even to, 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 to win and pray for your family, to get things ready, to get our lives in order before God, this is so critical right now that we know that we are in His presence and that we're, being, that we're pleasing to Him. You know, September is very near. I know there's all kinds of prophecies that are going on about what's going to happen in September, you know, that, uh, well, tribulation may begin or the rapture might take place, you know. I, I can't tell you any of these things. I, I'm not here to say what's, I'm not going to prophesy this is going to happen or that's going to happen. But one thing we do know, there's a lot of things taking place in September. We know that the Pope of Rome is going to the United States to speak to Congress. We know that uh, from, from his own document, that he did the encyclical that he has done up, that they are coming to bring a new world order for the people. I have heard recently also that they claim that the Pope of Rome has even baptized aliens already. And we already know that he said that he would do it, but what are, what are these aliens to begin with? It would be demons. You know, I don't want anything to do with that type of religion that is getting into that kind of nonsense. And yet so many churches are falling for this. The, the ecumenical movement, the World Council of Churches, is all about joining in with Rome. And here the Pope of Rome is calling for a one world government. He's talking about needing a one world head of the government. This is all in his encyclical, a one world economic system. They're going to fire CERN up and, and cause who knows what to happen. They're wanting, I mean, in, in their own statement there, uh, uh, Rolf uh, Hev, uh, Huer, his name is spelled H-E-U-E-R, who's the director of CERN, you know, made it clear with the British, on a, on a, on a British inter, a press interview, admitted that they're wanting to open up another dimension. Well, if they're getting apparitions, they're getting another dimension, but it's not where God is. Satan 
is, was desirous to be God. He wanted to be like God. He wanted to have, uh, he wanted to stand in the temple of God, be worshiped as if he were God. He's going to do that on this earth. When they build a temple in Jerusalem, as I've shared with you recently, they've internationalized the city. The infrastructure is being put together. It is soon all to take place. And I am sure in September is when they will do it. Like, like Paul Begley said yes, last night on Israeli News Live when he was here with us, he said, you know, Steve, they may not do a two-state solution as of yet, but one thing's for sure in September, it's either going to be a two-state solution or it's going to be Jerusalem is being internationalized or it could be both. And that's definitely coming. And then what are they going to do? They're going to build a third temple. Why? Satan is determined to be able to have the same type of ministry that Yeshua had. He is an antichristo. He is like Christ in place of a pseudo Christ. And he's good. You know, he wants to have the same three, three and a half years that Yeshua had. He wants to have that here on this earth as well. And he wants to rule from Jerusalem. And it's going to look good. Oh, the world would just fall for it. Oh, they're bringing all the world's religions together. And notice how the Pope of Rome does that, you know. He brings the Buddhists together, the, the, the Hindus, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the Sunnis and the Shiites. And he's bringing all the different religions together, Christianity. And he says, you all pray to God in your own way. Even, even with, the, with the Jewish, they believe the Torah. They, they stay with their God. And, you know, but we're all going to serve God. What God, do you, what God do you serve that is a God of confusion? It's Baal. You look at Cyrus, you know, we read Cyrus appears to be a great man in the Bible because he brought the children of Israel back to their homeland. But do you know Cyrus in, his, in the cylinder of Cyrus, look at that cylinder. You can get the translation from online. This is the evidence that he left behind about his legacy. He talked about returning the peoples to their own homeland. It wasn't just the Jews, by the way, either. It was other, other nationalities as well. He was restoring them to their homeland. So he was trying to do a good thing. Pope of, the Pope of Rome is a lot like Cyrus. Appears to be a good man. But Cyrus claimed to serve three gods. Baal is one of those gods that he give worship to. He writes it on the, he has it written on the cylinder called the Cyrus Cylinder. It's in France on, on the archeological, uh, in the archeological museum there. So, I mean, these things are amazing that are going on and, and they're going to build this third temple. Now the question is, is will they offer animal sacrifices? I don't know for sure, but if they do, it'll be an abomination unto God but I don't know what they're going to do as of yet. But the thing is, is they're definitely going to do something. And, uh, and I, well, by the way, I'm sorry, uh, the, the Cyrus the Cylinder is in uh, the Archaeological Museum in Britain, my apology there. In fact, we're planning on going there. I wanna actually photograph it myself so I can share that with you. You can look it up online and see photos online, but the thing is, is one of the things we're trying to do as we go to different places and we go back overseas, is we try to get the photos ourselves because there's so many copyright issues. If you have your own photo, then nobody can say nothing about it. It's like Pope Francis. I have 150 photos that I've taken personally of Pope Francis. So when I post his photo up, they can't nobody say I can't post it because I'm the one that took it. And here's the funny thing. Everybody is looking for the Antichrist to have a one world religion. You know, someone sent me a little thing on, on, on the messages there and said, you know, Wally Shubat's got a better idea about who the Antichrist is than this guy does. You know, but let me tell you something. That's totally foolish to begin with. Who is the man that just wrote the encyclical for a one world government, a one world religious system, a one world banking system? and calling for a head of it. And he even stated in his encyclical, he quoted Pope Benedict. And Pope Benedict said that the Roman Catholic Church should be the head of this. They're trying to fake a millennial reign. They're trying to fake false doctrines that they have, uh, that they have wrote about as it is, or that they have perpetrated in the last days here. There's a lot of false doctrines that are going on out there. Some of these things I need to take time and come back with you and really begin to go through some of these ones as well that they have done. 
so that we can know what the truth is. You know, because I'm not here to tickle your ears. I'm not here to try to just make everybody feel good. You know, my desire is, this is why we research the Word of God with all of our hearts. You know, we want to be right with God. We don't want to just have, you know, someone make me feel good and say this is right when it's not right. So it's important that we share things with you. This is why even, I mean, you know, I, I quoted f to you from about Satan coming in out of a river from the book of Adam and, Adam and Eve, you know, but I, I can't say it is a canon or should or should not be a canon of the Bible. That's not my place to say that. But nonetheless, according to Revelation 9, these angels were bound in the river Euphrates. It's demonic angels. Because remember, what was it? Two thirds of the angels went with, with, with Satan? And they come up with all these demons. And then we find out, though, written right here, they're coming in and out of a river that goes to the world they live in. But was that a physical river or is it symbolic? I don't know the answer to that. Anyway, I trust this is a blessing to you guys. I mean, this is serious hour, serious hour. We're going to get this up on YouTube because I know we were having trouble here with the, uh, with, the, with the sound quality. So I want to make sure that you guys that are watching a live stream that you'll be able to hear what's being said. We recorded it here on a separate camera as well. So it's using a separate audio and I trust that the audio will be better for you there. So I'll get this up right away for you. And uh, again, I, I just really believe that what's going to happen with this CERN is not of God. And it may, and, and there again, I'm not prophesying this. I'm only saying it could be what opens the lid off of hell. It could bring in into our world, in our dimension, you know, what, what we had here, hundreds of thousands and thousands, which in the translation I read from here was like uh, over a million or whatever that may work out to be. I guess it's like a multiple in the Greek language. I'm not sure. But that many demons coming on the earth? Read the type of apparitions they did to Adam and Eve and stuff, always appearing to people as an angel of light or something good. Or, you know, it really makes you think of the temptations that people go through today. I mean, Satan has the advantage of using television and computer and everything else to tempt and to cause people to fall and to, and to slip and to mess up. You know, but the thing is, is God wants a repented heart. This is all you have to do. My brother, sister, if you are in a fallen state, only repent and ask God for his mercy. He will forgive you. He would have forgiven Cain if Cain had repented. He gave him every opportunity. But then there comes a time where you cross that line. Don't cross a line with God where there's no way back. That's what happened to the people before the first destruction on the earth. The sons of Adam and Eve, as, as sin began to multiply, they fell. I mean, think about it. Only eight souls make it on the ark? There's not going to be many that's going to make it out of this world. That's why I encourage you, be in prayer. You know, pray without ceasing. The Bible says pray without ceasing. Pray day, night. Seek God with all of your heart. Pray for your family. Pray for your loved ones. Encourage your family and friends to be in prayer before the Lord. Seek God. Seek His face for His deliverance. He's the only one that can deliver us from these type of evil spirits and this demonic influence that is happening in this world today. And if you don't know Yeshua as your Messiah, I encourage you today to seek Him and to believe Him. He will come to you. He will accept you. All you have to do is repent and say, look up to Him and say, Father, God, Yeshua, I believe you to be the Messiah. Come and save me and take my sins away from me. Just confess your sins to Him and He is just to forgive you. That's all it is. It's not some workup. And then ask him to transform you into a true son or daughter of God. Oh my gosh. Anyway, I'll tell you what, I want to pray. Anybody that's listening, anybody that's going to be listening to this on YouTube, because, you know, sometimes I get messages on there, you know, I want to be saved. How can I be saved? I want to pray right now with those that want 
to be saved. If you're in a backslidden condition and you just want to pray and, and say, God, forgive me for what I've done and get your life right with God. Don't, I'm, not ta I'm not trying to send you to a church or anything like that. I'm trying to send you to God. I'm trying to get you before his presence and to, and to recognize that Yeshua is the salvation for us. And I encourage you, Gentile, Jew, whatever you may be, this is the hour. Let's go together before him, okay? Heavenly Father, I sincerely pray. I pray for those that are listening today. If there is one that is here, oh Lord, that is listening to this video or will listen to it on YouTube, whatever the case may be, and they want to know who you are, they want to receive you into their life, Yeshua, I ask you, Father God, to come down to them in the power of your resurrection, in the power of love, and fill their hearts with your own life, your own spirit that you brought and you gave. You died on this earth, Lord. Your side was pierced in order for that life to come forth in order for that light that was in you to come back upon them. And I'm asking you, Yeshua, to come upon the people, to let them, let them receive of your spirit. And I pray, Father God, for them that they will repent of their sins because if they're willing to repent, you're willing to give them your own life, Father. I ask this, Father God, in, your, in the name of your son, Yeshua, HaMashiach, Anisho, El Adonai. Amen and amen. God bless you. And until we get to speak again, I just pray that he goes with you and reach out to every soul you can. You know what? I even encourage you as well. You see a Muslim on the street? Tell them about Yeshua. See if they'll speak to you. See if they'll take the time to talk to you. Do it in love, but see if they will. And just let them know. So, you know, we love you as well. But you need Yeshua. <laughs>